Hello everyone. I hope I don't look like hell because yesterday I went out and played uh, football. So my friends and I feel like I'm, you know, broken all over. But I'm gonna try to do something for you guys today. Um, uh, what was this? Oh yeah. Well, first of all, I wanted to talk about a uh, book that's gonna be coming out by a guy called um, Jeremy Wagner, who was uh, all of the, the the guitarist for um. A band called Broken Hope, and uh, and uh, and and now he's the guitarist for a, for a band called Lupara, and he's gonna be um, giving out, I'm gonna putting out a book called The Armageddon Chord, which is about a guy who founds finds a, a chord, a particular chord of a guitar that is like a, if it's played in a song or whatever, it's supposedly gonna kill the whole world. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever. Um, Ever saw this movie? This uh, really, really kind of lame movie called uh, Dominator, in, that features um, Danny Feld from Kill Feld and, and vocals. It's about an um, English manga about a book that it has from from hell that has uh, this um, core that's gonna be able to destroy the to bring back uh, to bring uh, you know the armies of hell into into uh, the world, you know. But well, my point is not so particular about it. Um, that, that like uh, it's not about the. What I wanted to talk about is well, the fact that a guy, is, a, guy a musician, is making a book, which is not based on himself, but based on a on a story. But I want. I was wondering why uh, most guitarists that I or most uh, when it comes to music, why is it that it's always about a chord? You know, why can it be like? Uh, I, I know you, maybe you guys know um, this book called uh, well, this book, this album called um, Gaia by a uh, Mexican uh, Mexican, yeah, sure, uh, Spanish band called uh, Mago de Oz, and they have this whole idea about. I think it, in the second part of this of this trilogy they have or tetralogy they have, it's about how they can. There's this a relationship between one of Beethoven's uh, operas or works. And some paintings and whatever. But what I want always been asking myself when they talk when it comes about a, a rock opera or whatever or an album or a book about music, why does it always have to be about a, a certain piece of music that brings about the end of the world or you know, stuff like that? Why hasn't been, there been an idea where they have this guy, um, you know, save the world or whatever with some piece of music that was, you know, the ultimate? I don't know. Or to humankind or whatever. Anyway, the the book's coming out on um nah, blah, 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 on August twenty two, and it's gonna be called the Amarcadian Court, and it has this uh, uh character called Kirk Bastow, which whose personality and name are inspired by Kirk Hammett from Metallica and legendary guitarist Tibet. You guys might want to check it out. I don't know what's. Uh, I'm probably gonna end up buying it anyway, but there it is. Um, Monday was the, the 16th anniversary of the, no, the first. Sorry, uh, May the 16th was the first anniversary of the passing away of our beloved Ronnie James Dio, uh, who was remembered not only by his wife and his friends, but also by a lot of uh, musicians in the New York area where he lived. Uh, I also put up a small tribute there in in my in the website in the Facebook page, and of course, uh, well, we all are very sorry for for him for his passing. Um, what else? Uh, also, Ronnie James uh, Dio stand up on shout uh, fund cancer, which was cancer fund, which was uh, started after he died, has uh, collected over four hundred fifty thousand dollars for cancer research, which is a lot. If you ask me, especially since it's been basically one year since it since it started. Um, next was we have the news that um, Roy Mallorca from Stones Hour got a stroke, a minor stroke during one on, on um, around May the sixteenth also, and Stones Hour have been forced obviously to to um, cancel because they don't have a, a drummer and they're waiting for him to rec to recover before they can do. They canceled uh, most of the well the remaining dates. On their on their tour, touring North American tour, 
Uh, sad news for me because I wanted, I really wanted to go see this guy, this, these guys, um, and I tell them, and I'm, I'm even going to be even more sorry because I'm not going to be able to to see them even with this uh, diminished capacity. So I have a, a splinter in my in my hand that I have been trying to squeeze it out of my hand. Uh, and I tell them, uh, can our uh, are on tour uh, currently with a band called Blackfield from England. Also, I think they're very progressive too. I haven't heard, I can't remember actually. But the problem is that they haven't been able to get visas for all their uh, all their band members, who are quite a lot. I think there's around seven guys now, and they're not gonna be able to bring the whole the whole team. So it's basically gonna be a tour, an uh, acoustic tour, where they're gonna be ha having just uh, Beanie and Vincent, Beanie and Dancing, and Danny Cavanaugh doing the acoustic versions of their some of their newer material and one of or, or their um, older material. If you ever been paying attention to Danny Cavanaugh's on solo career or um, other uh, outside products from Atema, you know this guy's uh, he's really capable of doing a lot of stuff uh, acoustically, but I understand that a lot of people might be um, disappointed that they're not going to be able to watch the whole anath Anathema thing because, I mean, it's a really good band and their new album is quite experimental and I think that it should um, they, they, I mean, I think it's an experience that should be experienced by anyone. I wanted to go see them down to uh, Mexico City with um, Anneke and uh, Anneke Bangin Gersbergen from uh, an Aqua Dianique, but I um, fortunately had a lot of money. So, sorry for that. But if you guys can catch uh, Danny and, ben, um, and Beanie uh, playing, go. I'm, I'm sure you're not going to regret it. Uh, Scott Blake Whalen from uh, famously from uh, Stone Table Pilots and um, um, Velvet Revolver has released uh, his uh, his biography called Not for Dead, Not Dead and Not for Sale. And among the many topics that he mentions, where he when he talks about is about why he joined uh, Velvet Revolver, and it was part of the the sad stuff is that I mean a lot of people thought that Velvet Revolver was a good uh, second opportunity for for all the guys involved and to get a lot of momentum while this, they finished up uh, some of the other stuff they had planned and while to show the world what they could do while um, Guns N' Roses' uh, Chinese Democracy uh, came out and before some other STP came out. But uh, the problem is that uh, in this comment that he made is that he says that uh, he he didn't really want liked whatever he did with um, Velvet Revolver, and he basically and everybody else in the, in the band was in it for the money because they offered them a lot of money, and that they they thought it was really really cool, and that they basically they, they did it just for the money, not that they were, you know, into it, other than for the money, which I think is very sad because well I mean I could understand it I mean who doesn't like money, but other than that I think it, they had some some really good songs in there and. It, Sad that uh, to bash on a band that gave him so much, uh, so such a big opportunity, right? But uh, you know, rock stars. You see, I'm hoping I can get uh, I, my hands on a few amount of books that have been coming out on uh, for biographies. Um, and Scott Wayland is one of one of those. Even if I'm not a big fan of what he's done constantly, but anyway, I'm gonna be checking it. And for uh, those of you who are into Extreme metal. I want I'm going to share with you the fact that uh, Lock Up, the uh, this, this extreme metal band from uh, England, have been are working together on a new album, and it's gonna be feature featuring appearances by um, Hypocrisy Pain main man, namely Pierre Tatrin, who was also one time a time a band from uh, uh, a vocalist for the band, and uh, Jeff Walker from Carcass and Brujeria fame. <laughs> Uh, this is gonna be coming out apparently on July the first, so it's about a month and a half away, and in Europe, and July to the twelfth in North America via Nuclear Blast. I can't say that I've uh, I've listened to Lockup. I've heard about him, but I know he has a, a really really uh, good lineup. I, it has um, Shane Embury, Embury, sorry, on bass, and it has um, Nicholas Walker on. On drums, so and it has Thomas Lindbergh from All the Gates as a vocalist, 
Uh, I, I don't know. I can't remember who was uh, the drummer. I, I, th I know it was Jesse Pintado before, but I can't remember who was the vocalist. So, well, anyway, I was, of course, no, the, the guitarist is the one I changed because Jesse Pintado was the one who died. Let me look it up for you guys. Anyway, the thing is, uh, it's gonna be uh, a very extreme album, and basically, if you guys uh, like it, I mean, uh, you're gonna love it right now, right? Anton Reisenegger is the current guitarist who replaced Jesse Pintado. Yeah. Jesse Pintado is dead, right? I think something like that. Let me see. Where he just quit? No, oh, no, he died in 2006. Yeah, I remember that. Well, anyway, if you guys want to check it out, Lock Up, new album, kind of coming up. That's good. And uh, speaking of super bands, or two, or two, um, sorry, the, the splinter again. The, our two reviews this week are going to be about two albums made by super groups. The first one is a very, very dark album that I listened to when I, uh, I started trying to get into more and more, more and more extreme metal music and when, and when I still had the time to listen to extreme metal music without you know dedicating it and finding out who was playing in it and why they were playing certain styles this one's called uh, Silent Night Fever by Dimension Zero which is a Swedish melodic band that includes uh, Joke Gothberg once a vocalist for Marduk Jesper Strumblet uh, on guitar and bass uh, who was uh, at the time uh, the, the guitarist for um, In Flames this is around the time that came, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 2002 is around the time that um, In Flames released um, uh, River to Remain. Yeah, I remember because I was really into those guys and I was like, yeah, I want to look at, yeah, River to Remain. I think it came out like months before. I remember, yeah, I wanted to, I was reading to In Flames at the time, I wanted to get into it. And uh, the other guitarist is uh, Glenn um, Langstrom was also the guitarist for In Flames and who was the found, one of the founding members of In Flames and then changed and you know he's been all over the place and uh, Hans Nils and on, on drums I can't remember this guy I remember he's uh, very good oh yeah he's placed in the that I mentioned so you and Lance of Furion and more currently in the, the band called The Great Deceiver which I remember having really good um, reviews and various well uh, basically um, it's Silent Night Fever, which is a play on the Saturday Night Night Fever for by this old movie by John Travolta. Uh, it's uh, nine songs of uh, classic uh, death metal. Uh, yeah, death metal, like uh, more of the, that uh, Gothenburg death metal from the early days that, and not so much uh, grindcore trash metal that it has. That's what the, it's on their new album. On their newer album, especially, um, this is not, not just a sale. I think there's another one after that. Uh, the man who should not, who could not die, as yeah, the one that, that follows, and he who shall not bleed. It's the latest album, if I'm not mistaken, and that's uh, a bit not as death metalish. Maybe because they changed some of the of the band member, but uh, it's it's overall a very traditional album, death metal album. A lot of screaming in the death metal, traditional death metal way. Um, what can I tell you? Silent Night Fever opener. It's a great, great song. Um, not even dead is one is probably my my uh, favorite track of that album. Uh, what else was your darkest hour? I remember it was very good. Uh, the murder in everything. I remember everything was uh, very very good. But I also remember that um, I was at the time when that songs had to maintain a, a certain style. That if, if it didn't, uh, yeah, I would just lose interest in it. So maybe that's why I only remember two or three of the songs from the album. But overall, I remember it was very very good. Uh, the production, I can't remember who did the production. Well, Anders Frieden did it, the uh, vocalist for for um, In Flames, and Dimension Zero themselves produced it. They also have a special Japanese edition where they have um, a Helter, Helter Skelter by the Beatles as a cover song, which I remember also, also very good. Uh, cover art, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't made by um, uh, this American guy. Same pieces. Um, this guy who does a lot of uh, artwork for everyone, but everyone, it's uh, I don't know I think it was made by uh, Nicholas Sandlin. Yeah, it was made by Nicholas Sandlin. Sandlin, and that's why I remember it. Why I remember it. I liked it a lot. If uh, I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure I'm not mistaken. But anyway, uh, very great, good album. I thought I wanted to give you guys something 
uh, you know, more death that metalish style, more heavy. It's a great album. It's an album that uh, sadly I didn't see a lot of people pick up at that time. I remember, and I remember reading, sorry, one or two reviews, and not all, not all of them uh, were very good to them toward the guys. But if you can check it out, it's definitely somewhere along an eight, a solid eight, and. I don't see why you should you guys should not try to look it up. Yeah, Nicholas Sanden did it from uh, Dr. Kulidi did it did the cover. Anyway, check it out. Solid eight, good album. And the other album I'm gonna be talking about is gonna be <laughs> coming out of a uh, left field or right field when I talk about it. It's uh, it's called uh, Fallen by Super Finnish Super Band Gothic Super Band. Uh, for my pain, which at the time included uh, Juha Kilmainen, vocalist for Reflection, Lauri du Duohima, for at that time only the guitarist for uh, Embrace, now, now also in, in Karen, uh, Oli Pekka Toro, and for from Eternal Tears of Toro, or oh, Sorrow, sorry, uh, Anthony Hamailainen, uh, however, in that, uh, as basses and vocal, making vocals, he was part of uh, Night Rage, Thomas Kolopayan from Nightwish. On the keyboards, Petri Sankala for from um, Eternal to Tales of Sorrow also in uh, in drums, and he also has a uh, vocals making again female vocals by uh, this guy this girl called Miriam Remvak, better known as a Sphinx, from uh, from uh, Ramset also another another important Finnish band, well a band metal band yeah they're Finnish. Mm, no, they're from Norway, but it's basically a, also a super band. Anyway, uh, Fall is a great album. It's a gothic. It's somewhere. If you guys are into Finnish metal, you might know it's this. You're probably gonna know this album. I would say it's a, like a, a darker version of a Nightwish, but I also think it's somewhere a darker version of almost every band that th those guys played at the time. Uh, I like the whole thing up. Uh, until about you know I think I like a lot of the songs but like I said it was at the time when I heard the songs that they didn't have a certain uh, sound and the songs and it didn't have a like a certain line I would just lose it and I think uh, the last song which is the Tomorrow is a Close Gates and Broken Days if I'm not mistaken uh, kind of lost it for me along the way but uh, other than that it's 10 songs of uh, gothic metal uh, um, Finnish gothic, gothic metal at, at its best. You can't really go better than what those guys did at that time. I mean, you have two. I mean, you have the six guys who are the best, uh, but basically of the best at what they do. You guys haven't been ever looked into Karen or um, Etos or whatever. It, you should. You definitely should. I mean, it turns to the sorrow. I started checking them out after the fact of. Uh, for my pain, and I think those guys have a really, really good albums in their, in their belt. Uh, it's a shame that these guys haven't been recording. They promised another album. They have another single somewhere along the down the line. It's called uh, "Killing Romance," and they were trying to uh, hammer out something uh, last year or 2009. I can't remember or 2008 at the latest or the earliest, the earliest 2007. Yeah, 2007. And they, these guys tried to do something. And it hasn't been working out for them. I think mainly because of Thomas and and Laurie was probably going through his stuff in Karen. The night, the, I mean, all those guys have been all really busy. But I would like to see something else from those guys because they are very, very good. Anyway, check it out. I think I would call this a. I want to call it a nine, but I'm gonna call it an eight because I, some of the parts I think are just too over the top and not. You know, getting to a, anywhere, just come on, like trying to go into this, trying to be re really, really gothic, and they should, they could have done something, uh, you know, more to your face and maybe a bit more symphonic. Well, uh, I'm gonna be fighting myself again here because one of the good things about this album is that it's not that symphonic as uh, Nightwish, but also it has, but it has some nice keywords. Uh, you know what I'm gonna be telling you, telling you like it is. If it, it, this is more, if more like the sound, it sounds more like the sound of uh, Nightwish, somewhere around, um, somewhere between Oceanborn 
and uh, century child. Yeah, I can imagine that kind of sound, but with a guy singing. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, something like that would be like I think a, a fair description. And I think that's a, a that's one of the, my favorite uh, eras for Nightwish. So I think you guys check it out. I mean, check it out if you like it. If you think I'm talking on my ass, you can tell me. And see you next week.